Good morning everyone. So today we will discuss about the manufacturing of CMCs, manufacturing of ceramic matrix composites. In the earlier classes we discussed about the manufacturing of metal matrix composites. So in that we discussed about various types, depends upon the raw material of the matrix material. Those are classified into various types. Those are liquid state processing, semi-solid state processing, solid state processing, vapor processing and in-situ processing. So these are the various forms or various methods of manufacturing MMCs. So today we will discuss about the manufacturing of ceramic matrix composites. So whatever the ceramic matrix process it is, these are the common steps. So that is the fabrication methods of CMs. So all infiltration. So as you know that infiltration in the sense pushing or passing or sucking the material into a preform. So here we are using the same infiltration process for all CMC methods. So initially we are taking a preform and we are infiltrating. It means we are passing the molten material into so molten material into the preform. So that the infiltration might be due to a force or due to a capillary action. So are due to gravity itself. So it can be moved from top to bottom or bottom to up. So bottom to up that can be done by means of capillary action. So all infiltration techniques incorporate these following stages. Those are the first one is fabrication of preform. So depends upon the size as well as shape of our component. So initially we are preparing the preform of our component. That is the fabrication of preform. So that is the fabrication of preform. So here the required shape, the preform is of the required shape is prepared by laying up, by laying up and molding the fiber reinforcing phase. So by laying up, if you want the number of layers, it means the thickness is high, then we will add number of layers one after the above and then we will get a final shape that is done by means of this fabrication of preform. The next one is deposition of interfaces. So here the reinforcement is mixing with the matrix material. So in the earlier classes we discussed about the interfaces. So interface is none other than a coating, a secondary coating. So the fiber will not be contact with the matrix material for all the time. So some metals will not create bond with the matrix material. So it means there will be less bond between the fibers and the matrix. It means the reinforcement and the matrix. So to, to create a good bonding between the reinforcement and matrix materials. So we are adding a secondary material. So sorry, third material. It means apart from our reinforcement and matrix, we are adding one more material. Those are called interfaces. So here the second step is the deposition of interfaces. So here the fibers are coated with, the fibers are coated with interfaces during either the filament process. So during the fibers, during the manufacturing of fibers itself, we can deposit this third material or after the completion of our complete fabricated part, it means preform part, we can dip the same in the interface, in the interface for compound. So during either the filament production, so during the filament production in the the raw material, the starting manufacturing of fibers, those are filaments. So during the filament production or after the preform fabrication. So here by means of number of fibers we are preparing a preform like this with a number of layers. So again simply with the number, one after the other we are stacking this is the first layer and on the top second layer, third layer, fourth layer. So this is the schematic of layer 1. Similarly in the one more direction we are adding all the layers. So after the formation of this shape then also we can add this interface to the preform. That is the second one. So it can be done either by means of filament production or after free form fabrication. Both the things can be done. The next one is, the third one is thermal processing. So here we are infiltrating. In this thermal processing, here we are infiltrating the matrix material into the preform and then it is heated. Then it will be compacted and then only it can be a good component. So thermal processing. So ceramic matrix forms in the spaces. So here we are using the preform. So this preform having number of spaces, those spaces will be filled by the matrix material. So ceramic matrix forms in the space between the fibers, where the pre-ceramic fluid. So we are injecting the matrix material that is in the form of fluid, the ceramic fluid incorporated into reinforcing structure and it is heated. So after heating, then only it will be centered or the bonds will be initiated so that it will it can be a good solid part. So prior to that, we will discuss a thing. So as you know that this is the lamp. Here the oil is infiltrated into a cotton string by means of capillary action. 
So as you know that the file will be at the end or it will be at the top of the string. So here the oil, if the oil is in the bottom, generally oil will be in the bottom. So this oil is infiltrated into this cotton string by means of capital reaction. By means of capital reaction, the oil is flowing from one end or from the middle to towards the lamp or towards the fire. So this is working with one of lamp. So similarly, the same process is in, is using in this pyrolysis method. So polymer infiltration and pyrolysis. So here we are using the same principle. So here initially we are taking the fibers or the reinforcement preform. So it might be individual fibers or it might be a woven mat or whatever it is. So depends upon the size as well as shape and application we can decide any form of our reinforcement material. So it might be yes, particulates or it might be fibers or it might be woven fabric. So depends upon the shape as well as the application, the required property, we can use different types of reinforcements. That means either particles or fibers or woven fabric. So here the woven fabric, these fibers may be or may not be coated. So it depends upon the reinforcement and matrix material, the bonding between those two, the interface can be added or cannot be. So that depends. So if the bond between the reinforcement and the matrix is good, then we will not go for any third material that is interfaces. If there is less bonding between the reinforcement and matrix, there will be very loss, there are many disadvantages that means the fiber pull out or cracks propagation like that. So to avoid those, we are adding the that third material to the reinforcement material. So here the ceramic preform, this is our reinforcement. Here we are taking a reinforcement material. Those reinforcement material is dipped in a polymer sum. So it's a infiltration with free ceramic polymer. So here this is a polymer material. So this is a mixture of polymer plus alcohol plus water. So here we are making a slurry. This R is slurry. So here we are making the matrix material in a fluid form by means of the fluid form by means of adding polymer with alcohol and water. So then again this alcohol and water contents is depends upon the material. So depends upon this this material it will varies. Again here we are making a semi semi solid state. It means by we are making a slurry. In that slurry we are dipping this fiber or preform. So here the preform is dipped into the chamber that consists of a slurry. The slurry is a mixture of polymer. So it's a polymer, alcohol and water. So it's a mixture. Here by means of capillary action. By means of capillary action, the fluid is moving into the fibers. It means into the reinforcement. So here if the fibers are sucking by means of capillary action, the polymer, the slurry, which is available in the fluid state, that is infiltrating into the fibers. So here the slurry is infiltrating by means of capillary reaction, that is infiltrating into the fibers. After that, these fibers, so here it is infiltrating, so polymer is moving in the direction, it is a complete polymer matrix composite. So here it is a PMC, polymer matrix composite. So here the, the reinforcements are filled with polymer. So as we discussed that this is a polymer, it is infiltrating into the reinforcement. Now here it is the polymer matrix composite. It consists of polymer and, and reinforcements. So polymer matrix and ceramic reinforcement. Mm -hmm. So after that, here we are doing the pyrolysis action. The pyrolysis in the sense, in the absence of oxygen. So in the absence of with the less oxygen, in the absence of oxygen, we are heating this compound at 800 to 1300 degrees centigrade. So here we are heating this component. So initially we have taken a reinforcement preform. After that, a polymer is infiltrated into this fibers. After that, this is a final component after infiltration. Here this infiltrated component is heated from 800 to 1300 degrees centigrade. At these conditions, this polymer is converting into ceramics. So is here we are heating this. The heating is done. The, the process is called pyrolysis. Heating the component at this temperature is called pyrolysis. 
So during pyrolysis, we are heating with the absence of oxygen. Without oxygen, we are heating this compound. This compound at 1300 degrees centigrade, so that the polymer is converting into a ceramic. So this process will be repeated for n number of times. So this will be repeated for four to five times. So sometimes it may, it might be in the hundreds, 200, 300 times also. The process is very less. So the process is very slow. So while infiltration, the content of matrix infiltrating into the reinforcement is very less. Due to this process, this can be repeated n number of times. So again, after that, polycarbosilicane. Here the polymer is polycarbosilicane. Silane, sorry, silane is converted into silicon carbide. After heating this, as we know the thermoplastic, if we heat the thermoplastic for further temperatures, that will be converted into char. So here, if we are heating, so if we are heating this compound at 800 to 1300 degrees centigrade, at this temperature, our polymer is converting into ceramic. So here the polymer is converting into silicon. So polycarbosilane is converting, converting into silicon carbide. So here, after this, the deposition of our matrix metal will be very less. So to improve the volume fraction, the process can be repeated for n number of times. So it depends upon the volume fraction or depends upon the matrix material to be incorporated into the reinforcement, the process can be repeated n number of times. So generally it is 4 to 10 times. So it will be very high. In some cases, it will be around 200 to 300 times also. The same thing, reinfiltration and pyrolysis. Again, we are placing the compound, the final, this component into this chamber. So that again the polymer is infiltrating into this, after that somewhat cooling, after that heating. So heating again, so this process will be repeated n number of times to get a desired amount of matrix in the reinforcement. So polymer infiltration. Polymer infiltration and pyrosis is generally called as PIP. PIP is the method of fabrication of ceramic matrix composites. This is the method of fabrication CMCs. Ceramic matrix composite comprising an infiltration of a low viscosity. So of a low viscosity fluid. So if the viscosity of this polymer is high, then due to capillary action, the material will not be infiltrated into the reinforcement. So to avoid that, we are using only a low viscosity material. So that is infiltrating of a low viscosity polymer into the reinforcing ceramic structure. So this is the reinforcement. So this is the reinforcement. So polymer into the reinforcing ceramic structure followed by pyrolysis. So pyrolysis in the sense heating the polymer precursor. So this is the polymer precursor. So this one is polymer precursor. This polymer, heating the polymer precursor in the absence of oxygen. So without, in the absence of oxygen, without oxygen we are heating this compound when it decomposes and converts into ceramics after converts into ceramics after heating the polymer is converting into ceramics this is the working of PIP so the advantage is fiber damage is prevented due to the processing at a relatively low temperature as we know that the ceramics the temperature of our ceramics are the withstanding capacity of our ceramics are very high to come to convert that into a ceramic compound, the temperature should be very high. But here, in pyrolysis, PIP, we are doing a very less temperature, around 1300 degrees centigrade, we are getting a ceramic material. So due to that heating, due to that low heating, the fat, low heating, the fiber damage will be less. The next one is, good control of matrix composition. So good control of matrix composition. So here, the volume fraction that can be desired one. So the obtained, so we can repeat the process. As we know that the, by a single instance, we are not getting a compound. So in a single step, we are not getting a final composite metal. So we are doing n number of iterations. So n number of process. So in the first time, while dipping, it will be around 5% of matrix will be deposited into the compound. For example, 5%. After the again, second step, 
it will be again one more five percent. So similarly, like that, the composition will be increased. So that by means of that, so depends upon the matrix material that should be incorporated that can be controlled. So here n number of times we are repeating. So if we want the more matrix, again we will do the process. If if the matrix the infiltrated max, matrix is sufficient, then we will stop the process. So control of matrix material can be possible in this process. Good control of the matrix composition and the microstructure. So the microstructure, the formation of my structure is depends upon the rate of cooling. So the cooling rate can be controlled so that the desired microstructure of our compound can be obtained. So next, reinforcing phase of different types. So our reinforcement might be in any phase like particulates or fibrous. So whatever it is, we find ultimately we require a porous nature preform. Porous in the sense, uh, the whole thing, uh, it should have spaces to infiltrate the matrix material. So it should be a porous, it means it might be a loose fibers or particles. So if we join a number of particles, so that the, the powder metallurgy, by means of this powder metallurgy also we can be, prepare this preform. So by means of powder metallurgy, we can get a porous nature compound. So we require the porous nature. So to infiltrate the matrix material, we require porous. So depends upon the application, we can go for particulate or fibers. Both the things can be possible in this process. The next one is net shape parts can be maybe fabricated. Net shape, the size. So the whatever the size we required, the same size of the, the same size preform is using. So we are using the same size of preform. One is the thing is we are infiltrating the matrix into the preform. So the these gaps, so the spaces between these fibers can is filling with the matrix metal. Apart from this, some of the surroundings also, these fibers are also surrounded with matrix. So only a few amount is increasing. So that depends upon that we are reducing the size of the preform and we are achieving a net shape compound. So net shape parts, the exact size parts can be obtained by means of this process. The next one is matrices of various compositions. Matrices of various compositions like silicon carbide, silicon nitride, silicon may be obtained. So by heating the polymer, we can get different things. So depends upon the polymer, we can get silicon carbide or silicon nitride or silicon. And these three type of matrix metals can be obtained by means by means of this tip. Next, disadvantages. The fabrication time is relatively long. The fabrication of time is relatively long. Why? Because the n number of times we are doing the same process. We are repeating the process to get a desired thickness or desired amount of matrix. The process is repeating. So due to that, the fabrication time is relatively long due to the multiple infiltration pyrolysis cycle. So n number of times we are doing the same process. So to get desired amount of matrix into that, we are doing the same process. Same, we are doing the same process n number of times. Due to that, the, compound, the time taken for the preparation of this ceramics is increasing. Next, there is a residual porosity. So there is a residual porosity, decreasing the mechanical properties of the composite. So as we know that the preform consists of a porous nature, it means the spaces. Those spaces are filling by the matrix material. If the matrix material is not completely filled, the, uh, filled in between the spaces, in between the spaces, then the porous nature will be obtained. So some amount of holes will be obtained in the ceramic compound. So these ceramic, those holes will lead to the decrease of mechanical properties. That will lead to the decrease of mechanical properties of the composite. The next one is relatively, relatively high production cost. So as we are doing the same process for n number of times, so that the time consumption is very high, so that the salaries will be very high and the equipment, the cost of this fabrication time is increasing, so that ultimately the production cost is very high. So these are the, these are the various advantages and disadvantages of PIP. The next one is chemical vapor deposition. So this chemical vapor deposition is similar to, sorry,
So the next one is chemical vapor infiltration. This chemical vapor infiltration is similar to chemical vapor deposition process what we followed in metal matrix composite. The same thing here we are following the same procedure. So in that chemical vapor infiltration. So here in chemical vapor infiltration we are in using a chemical reactions between a reinforcement and the matrix material. So we are passing one more compound into the preform and the reaction between these two leads to a for leads to the formation of matrix material. So here this consists of a graphite holder. So the equipment. So the red color is our preform. So here we are placing the preform in a graphite chamber. So and this preform is heated with an induction heating. So these by means of these heaters, by means of these heaters, we are heating this preform. So we are maintaining the preform at elevated temperatures. It means at some temperatures. So as we know that the metals will react highly at elevated temperatures. So during casting also, so we are adding some more DA gassing. So in order to avoid the reaction between the atmosphere or on the top of the molten material, we are placing some exothermic material in order, to, in order to avoid the reaction from the outside surface and to maintain the temperature within the chamber. We are adding exothermic materials. So similarly, so here we are maintaining the reinforcement at some temperature. So those temperatures can be obtained by means of this induction heaters. So by means of induction heaters, we are heating the preform. So this is the hot zone. So the preform, those are this preform is placed in a graphite holder. So here this is also the net shape process. So depends upon the shape, the final shape and size of the component, we can use the same amount of preform. A similar size of preform, the rest of our spaces will be filled by the matrix material. So that ultimately we are getting a composite that consists of a reinforcement and a matrix material. Here the matrix material is formed by means of a reaction, a chemical reaction between the reinforcement and the gases, which will lead to the formation of matrix material. So this consists of a cooling chamber. So on the bottom of this, it consists of a water coils that is for cooling. So here, for in between the graphite chamber towards the reinforcement, we are passing a reactant gas. We are passing our final matrix material along with some hydrogen, argon, or helium gases. So these all are carrying gases. So in the presence of, so along with the hydrogen or helium or argon, we are passing our material main composition towards the preform. So these are carrying gases. These are carrying our matrix material or it's carrying our matrix gases. So into the preform. So here by means of this vapor reactant chamber of this channel, we are passing the gases. So those gases will react with the reinforcement, with the hot reinforcements. So here the reinforcement is in a hot seal by means of induction heaters. We are we kept this reinforcement at some te elevated temperatures. At this temperature, the gases obtained from this channel is reacting with that and it forms a matrix material over this reinforcement material. Here, already the reinforcement is available here. The gases, those gases will be reacted with this hot reinforcement and a small amount of layer will be deposited on the top of this reinforcement that acts as a matrix material. So the rest, the rest of this carrier gases and unreacted gases is exhausted by means of this chamber. On the top of this is this are having vent ports. By means of these vent ports, these unreacted gases as well as the carrying gases will come out from this from these inlets. Sorry, from those outlets. So here this exhaust gas is coming out. So initially we are placing a preform in a graphite chamber and we are heating those reinforcement. So from one more channel, we are passing a reactant gas along with a carrying gas of hydrogen, argon or helium. These three gases or any one, we are using any one, those, are, those gases are carrying our reactant gases towards the reinforcement. 
at these conditions there will be there chemical reaction takes place between the reinforcement and the uh, the gases so that ultimately a, rain, a matrix material is creating on the surface of the reinforcement material so chemical vapor infiltration method of ceramic matrix composite fabrication is a process in which the reactant gases the reactant gases the reactant gases diffuses into an isothermal porous preform so this is the porous preform so the preform is porous so here it consists of a porous preform and those preform is passed by means of a react sorry in which reactant gases diffuses into an isothermal porous preform made of long continuous fibers and form a deposition so here this preform consists of a long reinforcement long fiber reinforcement and there is a porous in between these fibers this porous is filled by means of a reactant gas deposited deposited material is a result of is a result of chemical reaction occurring on the fiber surface so on the top of the fiber surfaces due to this chemical reaction matrix metal is depositing next the infiltration of the gaseous precursor into the reinforcement ceramic continuous fiber structure is driven by either diffusion either diffusion process or an external pressure by means of pressure we are passing this reacting gases onto the surface of our reinforcement the next one the deposition fills so the deposition fills the spaces so as you know that that's a porous preform those spaces will be filled by these gases the deposition fills the spaces between the fibers so in between the fibers it means in between the fibers it is having a porous nature those spaces will be filled by this deposition forming composite material com forming composite material in which matrix is deposited matrix is the deposited material and the dispersed phase is the fibers in the preform so the reactant gases is entering into that and it is reacting with this reinforcement or reacting with the hot fibers and a substance is depositing on the surface the deposited surface is is acts as a matrix and the reinforcement and these long fibers are acts as a reinforcement so that here we are getting a reinforcement plus matrix that leads a composite material finish chemical vapor infiltration is similar to chemical vapor deposition in which deposition a deposition in the form deposition the form when the reactant gases react with the outer substrate surface so outer substrate in the sense our fibers of our or our reinforcements so the reactant gases react on the outer substrate surface outer fiber surface the next commonly the vapor reagent is supplied to the preform in a stream of the carrier gas hydrogen h2 gas argon or helium gas <coughs> along with this reactant gases we are using carrier gases also these carrier gases carries the reactant gases towards the reinforcement material silicon carbide silicon carbide matrix is formed from a mixture of methyl trichloroxylene methyl trichloroxylene is the reactant gas by means of this reactant gas we are getting silicon carbide so methyl trichloroxylene as the precursor and the hydrogen as the carrier gas so this carrier gas we are using this hydrogen so methyl methyl trichloroxylene is decomposed according to the reaction so this is the methyl trichloroxylene so that is converting into silicon carbide and 3 hexyl this hydrochloride is exhausted is moved out through this exhaust valves so the gases hydrogen chloride the gases hydrogen chloride is removed from the preform by the diffusion or forced out of the carrier stream so it means going out from this exhaust things carbon matrix is formed so one more thing the carbon matrix is formed from a methane precursor by means of methane we can get a carbon compound 
the ceramic the ceramic deposition is continuously growing as long as the diffusing vapor as long as the diffusing vapor is reaching the reaction surface the next the porosity of the material the porosity of the material is decreasing being filled with the formed solid ceramic so as the gas is passing into towards this reinforcement the surface a coating is developing on the surface so gradually the thickness or the flow will be reduced so here the porosity it means the holes the spaces between the material is decreasing why because the material is filling so the matrix material is forming on the reinforcement so that the gaps or spaces in the preform or the porosity is reducing the porosity of the metal is decreasing because being filled with the formed solid ceramic this is our matrix however in the course of the cvi chemical vapor infiltration chemical vapor infiltration process the accessibility of the inner spaces of the preform is getting more difficult due to the filling the vapor paths so here the gas is moving and those uh, small amount of matrix is depositing on the surface of our reinforcement so further processing the entering of the gas is difficult why because those all is fill all the gases or all the spaces are filling by this matrix metal so that the passes for this gases is very less due to that the movement is very less the accessibility of the inner spaces the accessibility of the inner spaces of the free form is getting more difficult due to the filling of vapor pots starting at the bottom of the surface those are forming a reactant gas is reacting with the preform and matrix is depositing so that the further spaces it means above spaces above porous nature compound is very difficult or the gases the passage of these gases towards this direction is very difficult and the forming ceramic matrix the precursor transportation is slowing down the precursor transportation by means of these gases we are transporting the precursor the transportation is reducing the matrix this the matrix densification it means sorry the matrix densification stops when the preform surface pores are closed the ratio of or the compound the volume of matrix the deposition of volume of matrix is reducing so that the density is reducing the matrix densification stops or reduces when the preform surface pores are closed so on the starting we are having pores those if the pores are closed the densification or the increasing the the improvement of matrix part on the above surface are reducing the final residual porosity of the ceramic compounds fabricated by cvi method may reach 10 to 15% so by means of this process we are getting a composite that is composite consists of around 10 to 15% of our porous nature it means unfilled materials so as we know that this is a having a porous nature those spaces the porous those pores will be filled by the reactant gases so if the reactant gases are depositing on this surface further processing or further movement of precursors is very difficult so due to that porosity will be residual follow porosity will be remains on the free preform so that will be around 10 to 15 percent next advantages of cvi so here low fiber damage due to relatively low infiltration temperatures so here also we are using very low temperatures compared to other processes as we know that ceramic processing is is somewhat temperature it was at elevated temperature we are doing that compared to other ceramic methods this is very low temperature process matrices of high purity can be fabricated high purity so the foreign mat materials the foreign materials will be volatile easily why because only the required our reactant gas is only reacting with the preform the rest of our material will be exhausted through this exhausting outlets so that purity will be very high so next low infiltration temperatures produces low residual mechanical stresses the next one enhanced mechanical properties so enhanced strength enhanced elongation and toughness can be achieved by means of this process next good thermal shock resistance compounds can be obtained by means of this process next increased creep and oxidation resistance 
by means of this process the creep resistance is very high and also the oxidation resistance resistance is also high next matrices of various compositions may be fabricated like silicon carbide carbide silicon nitride boron nitride boron carbide zirconium carbide etc so various matrices can be obtained by means of this process next disadvantages so the process is very slow it means slow process rate may be continue up to several weeks so by means of vapor deposition the deposition rate is very less at a single instance only microns of matrix material is deposited or will be deposited on the surface so due to this limitation this process can be repeated over weeks so continued for several weeks next high residual porosity so as we discussed in the earlier so if the bottom surfaces are filled the are filled with the matrix material the further spaces of further porosity is high so it means the porosity the matrix filling is is very less for the surface for for the surfaces so due to that high porosity will be will leads to high porosity next high capital and production costs so here we are maintaining maintaining the temperature in vapor state so to get the material into vapor state we required high temperature furnaces so our high heating elements due to that the cost the capital cost as well as the production cost will be high for this severe process chemical vapor infiltration process